This video is about the ratio test, a test that can be used to prove that a series converges or diverges. The ratio test is all about looking at the ratio of consecutive terms. To figure out how it works, it can be helpful to think about geometric series first. Recall that for a geometric series, the ratio of consecutive terms is given by this number r. And if r has absolute value less than 1, the series converges. While if r has absolute value greater than 1, it diverges. For more general series, the ratio of consecutive terms is not necessarily a constant. But if we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms, and if we get a limit of l which is less than 1, then the series converges, just like a geometric series. In fact, the series is absolutely convergent, meaning the sum of the absolute values of the ANs converges, and therefore the sum of the ANs converges also. If, instead, the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms is a number l that's greater than 1, or if that limit is infinity, then, just like a geometric series, the series diverges. Finally, if the limit of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms is exactly equal to 1, or if the limit doesn't exist, then the ratio test is inconclusive. That is, the sum of the a sub n's may converge, or it may diverge. And to figure out which, we'll have to use a different test or a different argument. Let's apply the ratio test to this series. We'll need to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms. In this case, that's the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1 squared times negative 10 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial all over n squared times negative 10 to the n over n factorial. I've just plugged in n plus 1 for n in this formula to get the a sub n plus 1th term. I can simplify this by flipping and multiplying, and now I'm going to rearrange my factors. This expression is equivalent to the previous one. I've just arranged factors so that similar factors are on top of each other. This will make it easier to cancel things. Now n factorial means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on, and n plus 1 factorial means n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 and so on. So if I divide n factorial by n plus 1 factorial, all my factors from the numerator will cancel with factors from the denominator, and I'll just be left with 1 over n plus 1. Also, negative 10 to the n plus 1 over negative 10 to the n cancels out to just negative 10 to the 1 power. So I can rewrite my limit as n plus 1 squared over n squared times negative 10 times 1 over n plus 1. I'm going to divide my limit of a product into a product of limits. Now as n goes to infinity, n plus 1 over n goes to 1. So this expression, which is equivalent to the square of n plus 1 over n, also goes to 1. The limit of the absolute value of negative 10 is just 10, and the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 is 0. Therefore, our limit is 1 times 10 times 0, which is 0. And since 0 is less than 1, by the ratio test, we know that our series converges, absolutely. This video was about the ratio test, which focuses on the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of consecutive terms. 
depending on whether this limit is less than one, greater than one, or equal to one, we can determine whether the series converges, diverges, or if we need to try another test.